Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to my office. Now, I haven't been doing any little ditties on YouTube for quite some time because I've been working seven days a week and a few hours overtime as well. And I'm getting the shakes, getting the DTs, because I haven't been able to do any filming for a month. But I'll get a fix of that later on and I'll be doing some filming in the dark. Now today's subject is a direct result of me working all those hours. It's allowed me to buy something new and that's a backpack. And that's today's subject. All about what I've used in the past to carry my camera gear around and what I'm going to use in the future. Eight years ago, I brought the Lopro 300 flip side. Great little bag for shooting out in the bush just for a couple of hours. I just wanted to put my DSLR in there, a couple other bits and pieces, be able to fly out here in a moment's notice, straight after work, whatever. And it's been a great bag. It's a little bit faded, a little bit worn around the edges. But Lopro make their gear to last. Really high quality zips, a little bit squeaky, but they are really easy to use still after all this time. And I think I'll get another five years or something out of that bag. That's been a really handy little thing just to chuck around, go away on holidays, whatever. Throw little bits in there, off you go. Got pockets on there. I've had to rip out all the guts. I just had too much gear. I'm now doing a lot more filming than I am photography. So I've had to put all my audio gear in here as well. It's just gotten too small. The bag that I've been using for overnight hikes is a Low Pro 400 tracker for a 400 millimeter lens. That's how Low Pro uh, talk about their bags instead of liters. It's about the lens that can fit in on the camera. Alright, so I've had this little bum bag on my bum every time I come out to do photographing and filming. It's, it's always on me bum and it's been awesome. Now this is for the top of our tracker. It's a personal bag, you can put all sorts of things in there, first aid gear, whatever. But I use it to hold my batteries, pocket knives and all sorts of things. Headphones for the when I'm filming, have a listen to what I've been talking about. Love it. Unfortunately, in the last few months, it's no longer waterproof. So we'll have to probably replace it, but it's been fantastic. Now this tracker has rubber coated zips. So it seals properly when you pull it back over. Really good, loved it. But the actual material now is just I've just worn it out. You can see it's frayed there. But it's been awesome. Somehow going to have to replace it. Because you can only buy them with the bag, not separate from what I can see. Alright, let's have a look at the tracker. Used it down at Wilson's Promontory and a couple other places for overnight hikes. Three, four day hikes. It's been great. Glow Pro are all about looking after your gear so it's well padded as well as spending money on those fantastic waterproof zips. So it's all about quality for Low Pro. Not too fussed about whether they're trendy looking. Most of their gear is built like a suitcase. A bit square, a bit boxy looking. That's been awesome. You can see lots of padding on here. Very comfortable. Get to your last day, a four day hike. Starts feel it a little bit. doesn't cut in, but you feel it a little bit. Same across here. They just cut right across almost to touch each other. Depends on how big a person you are. Uh, how, around the girth. But everything is solid and well made. Plastic is lasting really well. Love the bag. I'll have a quick look. Don't want this little ditty to run too long. Alright, inside. DSLR there, because that bag's been so chock-a-block full of audio gear and monitor, 
field monitors and all sorts of things, I've had to come back to use this. So I've put the audio gear in there, lenses, other bits and pieces, batteries, whatever, camera there, and uh, monitor and stuff in there. Lots of pockets there. They're waterproof, they're plastic see-through, so you can see what's in there. CF card holders. Tripod holders, this a little thing you pull out there and it can, tripod leg can sit in there so it doesn't fall out. You can put a belt across to stop it from twanging around the place. Plenty of room all over the joint. It's been a really good bag. It's for your water bladder, separate compartment. Pull it up. If water leaks, it's not gonna get into your bag. Really good idea. There's just lots of stuff about this bag that's really good. Uh, another pocket on the other side here. Nice padded there. Another one down the bottom. Put lots of stuff in there. CF cards. That's been a great bag. But quality of all this thick padding, self-holding, not collapsible, and those beautiful zips all come at a cost. And that is weight. This is close to five kilos. So it's a lot extra to cart around when you're on a four day hike or a three day hike. You really start to notice it. The successor of this bag, one I can get today, Low Pro 400, 450 tracker it is now, they call it. It's four and a half kilos, so they haven't stripped the weight. It looks exactly the same except it's black. So that brings us to buying a new bag. With all these things I've learnt from these two wearing them over the years have a better picture of what I really want in a backpack. And that comes down to four things. The first one being, it's got to look good. It's got to look sexy. Very modern. My second one is, it has to be functional. Being able to put things in pockets everywhere and be able to get them out with ease without any hassles. My next one is it has to be waterproof. Very important. But the biggie for me, the number one, is weight. Has to be light. Alright, why did I buy the F-stop instead of its competitor these days? For this bag, the Agena 40 litre. Well, Low Pro have come out with what they call the Whistler. And that looks to me like it's similar design and everything to an F-stop. Not self-holding, collapsible. So there's no much, not much foam in them. The Whistler has a little bit for the compartment, but the rest of it looks quite soft. There's not as much padding in it. And I was umming and ahhing about where to go. And in the end, it came down to weight. The Whistler is 3.3 kilos. My Agena is 1.7 empty. Now, unlike Low Pro, that provides you with all the dividing velcro panels you have to buy what f-stop call an ICU so it's extra money on top of buying the bag now I end up getting the medium slope and that is half a kilo so altogether we're 2.2 kilos. So we're stripping close to three kilos. And that's a winner for me. So this bag, I'm denied, but yes, wait, got me in the end. Well, let's have a quick look at the Agena. Inside we have a pocket. You're going to have to be choosy about what you put in there. It's very thin and can rip quite easily. Not a lot of money spent on this bag. They've skimped a bit in places. 
these are not elastic, which I thought they were. They're not. I put my little microphone holder in there. Sennheiser shotgun microphone, that's for. Uh, it just fits in. I had to force it in. I don't think I'll be using any of this. If it was elastic, I could have put a lot of things in there, but, but things are just going to slide out pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know why they use the same strap as they have on the outside. A bit useless for me, but there you go. Alright, uh, let's have a look around the outside before we go hunting inside anymore. We have very thin foam in there, bro. There's just not a lot there. Obviously, they're sort of aimed it at people that aren't going to be using it for hours and hours and hours. Myself, I am going to use it for hours and hours now. I'll have to put some extra foam along there somehow, get inventive and velcroed on somehow to help me out because they could dig in when I go on a three or four day hike to Wilson's Prom, which I am in September. And that's what I bought this for. Instead of having the two, I've decided to go for one. Have it as a combo for quick outs and long hikes. I will have to modify it a little bit. I can see that's going to happen. That's very thin as well. The belt's right in the middle of your gut. Whether that's going to be an issue cutting in, I don't know. I'll find out, I suppose. We come down the side here and do that. So put your uh, tent in those straps. It's very similar to the, the Low Pro there, the tracker. Lots of straps that has for all sorts of things to connect to. But yeah, we have a hydration hole up here, the rubber cover, but the bladder goes inside and doesn't have any protection really, there's a pocket, but it's not, you can't seal it. So I'll be using my hydration bag in this pocket, I would say. But at the minute, I've got my audio gear in there. That is the Sennheiser ME66 with a K6 power modulator in, and it's in a tube of a fluorescent light. You buy them for lighting places really cheap just fairly thick sort of plastic the cap for the light as well uh, screwed one in put a bit of foam in it a bit of foam on the top one there just keeps it all nice and safe from getting damaged a bit of DIY sort of thing yeah, and it's uh, all the cables that go with it five litre, <laughs> a five metre lead there so I can get it right up close to my subjects and have me back. Okay, have you noticed that there's no rubber coating on the zips here? That is going to be an issue. I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to put most of my gear in plastic bags on these side pockets. You look up. On the other side, that's exactly the same, same size pocket. Put whatever you like in there, clothes or whatever. On the back here, we have a rubber coated zip. Why they stopped at that, and there's another one up the top here. Yeah, they, it's like they're skimping on money. Uh, rain will come down on the back and on the sides there too. This has a bit more plastic uh, coating inside so you'd probably be fairly confident that things might not get wet in there but we'll still put it in a plastic bag I think that'll be where my main clothes go in that one when I'm on a long hike we'll come to the top look at that it's starting to drizzle it's always something if it's not aeroplanes it's rain or it's wind whatever a rubber zip on the top bag. Uh, no pocket up there, you can see that's thick plastic to stop the rain getting in. I've just got a face washer clip, it's good for holding plastic bags if I put 
put a rain cover over the top of my camera, whatever. It's just handy. First aid kit out of the, the tracker. Might as well just put it in here, everything's in there ready to go. In a little net, netted bag at the top with a bit of Velcro on there just to keep everything in there. Key holder, it's one of those, yeah, release ones. Put that on your, your keys and leave it on all the time and then you can just clip it on when you go to need it. You had to pack it away so we don't lose it. Alright, moving on. Underneath that, we go into the main bag. If I can find the zip. And it's on this side. Again, no waterproofing. Heavy downpour, it's going to go straight through that. We do have... Well, look at that first. Let's put that up a little bit. We have this pullover cover. Now, my experience with pullover covers is that they always come up like that. Or even more. Especially over time. When the bag is completely packed out, I'd say it holds a lot better. But inside, let's have a quick looky in here. I have a raincoat just in case it rains. Lightweight, hardly feel it. Packs away. Almost nothing. So that's a bit of honey, <clears throat> bit of honey soaked in notes. Draw out my little animals so I can film them properly. LED light, which I could almost use now, it's getting very dark. The leads for my monitor. A cap, handy, just for the rain, uh, not just to keep the sun off my head or anything, but I can use it as a, sh a sun shield for the camera as well. Monitor, and a plastic bag for covering my video camera, just in case I always have it with me. It's good, it's good padding too. Then we're at the top of our ICU. So there's quite a lot of room in there. When you're looking at on their websites, whether it's low pro or uh, f-stop, it's very hard to get all the information that you really want. We'll give you all the basic sort of stuff, but the real stuff that we want to know about, don't say anything. And I looked online everywhere trying to find out more about this bag, but I couldn't get the information that I wanted. So hopefully you're getting it off me now. It's supposed to be sexy looking right obviously they fill them up with foam so they fill out properly and look really nice well because this is collapsible has no foam in it it doesn't hold its shape like the low pro does unfortunately and i couldn't see that online i thought that it would hold itself a lot better than this so it's not Particularly nice looking, it's be alright when it's full of gear, it'll be fine. Now with our ICU, let's put all this out of the way for a second. With our ICU, I bought the medium slope. Now I have an issue with this bag, and that is they talked about on their website that they had a frame in here to hold it so that this could hold its shape better and be able to pull up those unrubber coated zips. It makes it really hard to get my hand in to undo the velcro that goes down and down onto the ICU to hold it in place so it doesn't shift up and down while you're maybe running or hacking around the scrap, whatever. I have to go pull it out the way a little bit, shove my hand down. I've got camera gear in my little ICU, so not a lot of room. Okay, that's off. Oh man, this side is, you wouldn't want to be in a hurry, would you? Okay, that's off. Now we have to squeeze it out. So unlike the Lopro, unzip it, grab it if you want. This, you've got to wrestle, 
if we want to pull this out. I don't know. <laughs> Plenty of room in there. If you didn't want the uh, ICU in there, there's lots of room to put stuff in, but there's no padding for it. Not a lot of padding on this. There's a little bit much more on the, uh, the tracker. Now I have an issue with this ICU. There's a pocket here. It has extra padding there. So look after your Surfer Pro or whatever you're going to put in there. Couldn't put a, you have to have a very tiny laptop, but a Surfer Pro or something like that would go in there all right. My issue is there is no Velcro strap or Velcro to lock it off. When you pull that up, they're going to slide straight out. That is very slippery material, there's nothing to hold it. So you'd have to go like that, hold on to it, then pull it up so it doesn't hit your camera or slide out. I am going to have to buy one myself and put it on. So they're skimping all over the place. Yes, I'm whinging, but it's true. There's just bits and pieces about their gear where they skimp over. Uh, all right, so let's have a look inside. Got my 7D Mark II with a 300 millimeter lens on and the lens hood. Lens hood's great for hacking through the scrub, stops the branches scratching our lens. So it's always on there and it fits in there just. Uh, yes, filters, ND filters you can put in there. I've just got it worked out here for what, just a quick trip out the bush. Flash, we have our elastic Velcro straps there to stop them from falling out. At least they give us that. Uh, we've got two of them. Can change all these pockets. There's about three or four more bits like of those uh, dividers I took out. Uh, yeah, so batteries, a couple of things in there. That's great, I suppose. I can pull this out. Leave that in the car when I go away on holidays. Pull this out, put it in my room. Check out what I've shot for the day. So that's a little little ICU. Could I have gone to a large? Yes. Is it a big worry? No. It would have meant I could have put a little bit more in there. I think it's a hundred mil longer which means I squish up my compartment at the top a bit more. Yeah. In hindsight, yeah, I probably would have preferred to have had the large, but I've got this now and that's the way it's going to stay. Putting it in. Now I found to get the zips undone easier and not have to wrestle too much with that aluminium framing that they've put in there. It's just under the zip. If I pull this up a little bit past it, and all I have to do then is only pull the zip of the bag out the way, and I can get into it a little bit better. There you go. We have lots of places to put tripods. And you can see how dirty this has gotten off this wet log. It does wipe off pretty well, but I'm wondering about waterproofing. Is the material waterproof? That means is the stitching done really tight? So water can't get in, or is it silicon based waterproof where they've sprayed it or soaked it in some solution? Now I took this bag out in the dark last night to see what it was like. Now it's the same width as me, pretty much, with a low pro, is a lot wider than me. It makes a difference when you're trying to push your way through shrubby trees and stuff like that. You don't have to go, with this one I have to go sideways sometimes to squeeze through or take it off. With this one I can just go straight through, it's no worries. So let's go and have a look how I went with it at night.
bag is so light. Well, here I am, out in the dark, and how have I gone with the backpack? Well, it's been pretty good. Easy to find stuff. Easy, fairly easy access, except for that ICU. A little bit hard to get into, but otherwise, everything else has been really good. I've had the field monitor on. I've got the LED light on there. I've got the Sennheiser shotgun microphone out on. I've got a five meter cable running back to the K to the camera <laughs> up across the trees here. I've been getting some beautiful sounds of the agile anticons, the little carnivorous marsupial I love to film, as well as the native rodent, the bagel. And the bags work really well. It's good hacking across that uh, log. It's lightweight. I think that's the biggest thing I could say about it so far is it's really good to be having something that's so lightweight like that. Well, we've looked at both companies. The comparison between the two is Lopro focus on looking after your gear with all that padding, the bag being able to hold its shape, beautiful waterproof sips, quality written all over it but at the expense of weight. Where f-stop are much more about stripping weight and skimping on a couple of things. Maybe not quite as high quality as I thought they were going to be. That is being a little picky, I guess, but we have to be, don't we? We want things to be the way we want it. You can't go into a shop well, I haven't been able to go into a shop and physically hold one of these to really see what it's like. I can only look at them online. A lot of shops just don't carry anything like this. Easy to pick up online, but not in the shops. So, yep. Great bag. I'll be happy with it once I do some little alterations myself. It'll do me good. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Bit of a comparison between two companies. Now, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years, like camera reviews, camera accessory reviews, bag reviews, also uh, birds in flight and flash photography, blah, blah. Click on the icon down there, take it to my channel. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya. But, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've spent half my life in here. <laughs>